Okay, it looks like the slides are not going to project, so I will, I will, you know, try and explain everything. Okay, um, I'll have to thank Demola for bringing me here today. It is a privilege to be here. Um, I went to Medilag right across the street, uh, arguably the best medical school in the country. Unfortunately, Dr. Dane wasn't able to come there. Uh, you know, those who didn't pass the exam, they had to go to uh, Ibadan. So, um, <laughs> anyway, thank you for bringing me here. Uh, now, as you heard all my introduction, you didn't hear anything about COVID. I'm a cardiologist, critical care medicine. It was never in my wildest dreams that I would be involved in infectious disease COVID. Never, ever. But 2019 came around. And we all heard what was happening. Um, this was towards the end. Uh, China had COVID. Then it went to the other countries. And um, if you read the news and read statistics, it was obvious it was going to get to us. Uh, many people said, no, it's not coming to Nigeria. We are immune. We have good weather, all these things. But anyway, we got prepared in first cardiology. We said, look, some friends called me, said, Yemi, you know, you are the ones who do in critical care medicine, and um, this thing is coming. Are you going to be able to help us? I said, ah. so we sat down, thought about it, said, well, okay, we know critical care medicine, that's our specialty. So we got ready for COVID. We got in touch with Lagos State, and um, we put the things together, because it's, taking care of COVID ICU patients is very different from regular patients. You have to prevent the spread to your patients, you have to prevent the spread to your doctors, and all that. So they set up all the protocols for us, and uh, we started uh, looking after COVID patients. So one of the reasons I agreed to go for all these talks is I don't want that to happen again. That was the worst period of my professional career. It was, it was terrible. Seeing a brand new disease nobody knew anything about. We had no idea how to treat. It was all guesswork, all guesswork. Uh, so I'm grateful today things have improved. But I need to warn all of us here, COVID is back. It is back big time. Um, I wish I could show you the graphs, but uh, COVID is definitely back. Um, in December, we had the second wave. We survived the second wave. It was, there were more patients in the second wave, but not as many deaths. This, then things went down by March. So everybody thought COVID was over in Nigeria. It's not over. It's back up. We're getting over a thousand cases a day now. Luckily, mortality is not as high, but people are still dying. If your mortality rate is one percent, that means one in a hundred people will die. If ten thousand people get it, that means a hundred people are going to die. So we've got to take this disease seriously. And bottom line, I will say this now. I'll say this at the end. Most important thing is simple measures: face mask hand washing, social distancing. I'm happy to see that this church is mostly in compliance with all those things. So uh, I'm happy to see this um, because I'm one of those who advocates. Uh, okay, first of all, let me just tell you some statistics. Most of the COVID cases in Lagos State and in Nigeria come from weddings, funerals, church, and the mosque, religious gatherings, most of them. But with common sense and simple measures like we're all doing now, everybody has their face mask, everybody's sanitizing outside, uh, we're social distancing as much as we can. Uh, those are simple measures that will protect us. China got rid of COVID without the vaccine. So vaccine is important, but China got rid of COVID without the vaccine. And it was all these measures. They were draconian in China, but we just have to use our common sense. Okay, now, um, just to put things in perspective, there have been over 200 million cases of COVID around the world. And over four and a half million people have died. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Now, 
Everybody knows, unless you haven't been reading the news, the worst COVID country is the United States, which supposedly has the best healthcare system. But what happened in the US, politics got involved. The CDC, who is supposed to be the godfather of all infectious disease in the world, got into the politics and they let the thing get out of hand. And that's where they are now. We are in a position to prevent this thing from getting out of hand. We are 200 million people. If this thing escapes like it has escaped in the US, a lot of us are going to die. So please, if there's anything you remember from this little talk, face mask, sanitize your hands, social distancing, common sense things like that, and uh, avoid large social gatherings, especially indoors. Like here now, you can see the windows are open. There's good cross ventilation. Everybody's spaced out. This is fine. But when we're all packed together, squeezing, the thing is going to spread. And I will talk about this Delta variant. It spreads like wildfire. You just can't understand. You see somebody standing over there. Next thing you know, 10 of us in this church have the COVID within two, three days. So it spreads really, really fast. So please be on the lookout and be very careful because, okay, let me, let me put it this way. If you go to Ajegunle, you go to Mushim, they don't believe COVID exists. They don't. And if you ask them, ask your houseboy, ask your maid, ask your driver, do they know anybody who has had COVID? And they will all tell you, no, they don't know anybody who's had COVID. But I'm sure all of us here know one or two people who've had COVID. We know a couple of people who have died. So it would seem like the, middle, the uh, lower income people say, this is a disease of rich people. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I've seen both uh, ends of the spectrum get COVID, but true, it is mostly in our uh, economic um, segment. And I have my theories on this. One, most of us here don't exercise. Two, everybody, when we were taking care of COVID uh, in March, April, everybody who died was low in vitamin D, every single one of them. All right, the way you get vitamin D is from the sun, being outdoors in the sun or taking your vitamin D supplements. All right, so my theory is those guys are out in the sun, they're walking around, they're on Okada, all that stuff. So they have adequate vitamin D levels. Those of us who take the car from here to Luth and things like that don't get any sun at all. Uh, our vitamin D levels are going to be low. And that's one of the reasons why I think our mortality was high. It was up to 6% at the beginning of COVID. Now it's dropped. A lot of us have listened to people talking and listened to the good parts of uh, social media. Social media has a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, but I don't, I, okay. Show me with a raise of hands. Who here is taking vitamin D supplements? Anybody? You see? Most people. Um, so I believe most of us have started taking vitamin D supplements because we've heard you have to, it's one of the ways to boost your immune system. So one, we're taking vitamin D supplements. Two, we're actually being more healthy. And three, we're being more conscious about uh, social distancing and things. So mortality has gone from just under 10% to now it's about 1% in Nigeria. So that's one of the reasons I think it is working. So we're not going out in the sun, but we're taking vitamin D supplements. Now I play golf. Demola two plays golf. Um, I have been tracking the statistics. In Nigeria, there are over 10,000 people that play golf. Only two have died from COVID. And those two were elderly people who didn't play that much. So I think the combination of exercise, being out in the sun, actually does help. All right, so uh, please take your vitamin D supplements, take your vitamin C, but the one that I know is directly aligned with COVID is vitamin D. Now, you don't need to go and start taking 5,000 international units a day. That's too much. Too much of everything has its own side effect. I would say 1,000 a day is just fine. When you come to the hospital, we give you 2,000. When we see your vitamin D level is below zero, we give you 5,000 for a few days to bring it back up. Okay, so please, it's simple things I'm going to talk about. Uh, vitamin D, exercise, social distancing. Now, 
I wish you could see this map. The areas where there's the most COVID are all the developed countries with the best healthcare systems. That's where they all are. Now people say, okay, it's weather protecting us. Well, I'm not so sure because if you look at the, the weather line on the map, we're right in the same weather zone with Brazil, Venezuela, where they're having a hard time. Um, India is hot. Now, India's COVID problem, let's say December, January, when we were having our second phase, the whole world was going through a second phase. India had almost zero cases. Everybody was praising India. Then politics started. They started having mass rallies, political rallies. You know there are many people in that place. So in this place here, maybe they'll have 10,000 people. There are all these things. So they had mass rallies. Then they had religious rallies, the religious gatherings. The Hindus were going through some uh, ceremony at that time. So those two things now triggered off one of the worst outbreaks we've ever seen. But there is a small area in India called, I think it's Kerala. They haven't had one case. One case, they haven't had one case. It's uh, a bit confusing, not one. But it is a fishing town. And everybody is out in the sun almost all day long. And then they're not, you know, crowded. It's uh, well spaced out. So maybe there is some uh, credibility to this, my theory of vitamin D. But I do know, I feel strongly, if you're not going to go out in the sun, take some vitamin D and get some exercise. Just try. Get some exercise. Instead of walking from here to uh, Luth, I mean, taking your car, walk. It's not that far. If you can walk out in the sun, even if it's in the evening, 15, 20 minutes a day, it's all you need. It's all you need. So at least get yourself fit. Okay. Another theory that going around is um, one of the reasons why health, um, COVID hasn't hit us hard is, as most of you know, COVID affects the elderly population much more than the younger people. All right? So when you go to the Western world, the median age in America, median age in America, uh, UK, Spain, and all these countries is about 35 to 40. So they have a a group from about 40 to 80. That uh, is quite a lot, it's a significant part of their population. More than 50% of them are above uh, 40. In Nigeria, our pop uh, uh, population pyramid is like a pyramid. So most of the country, the mean age in Nigeria is ni 19 years old, all right? Not the average, the mean age is 19 years old. Most of the population in Nigeria is under 30. All right, so those are the guys who are able to take this COVID, have a few symptoms, some have no symptoms at all, and are fine. So we have a very large young population who are mostly immune to COVID. Now, the other thing I've seen is the very elderly, 85 and above. When we were running the COVID ICU, none of them died. None of them died, not one died. And my theory is a theory is that they have lived through all the trouble. Ah, the slides are up. <laughs> I've totally uh, gone off uh, track here. Okay. Uh, okay, can you put up slide um, eight, if it will show? If I, yeah, I'd rather see the slides than my uh, gray hair on that thing. The, I didn't know my hair was that gray. Okay, I don't know if you can see this well, but you can see the median age. Japan is over 45. Nigeria is way down at the bottom, 19. And I think that is protecting us. That's protecting us a great deal. Um, I see they've confused me. Okay. No, let's leave the slides alone. Uh, I, it has, my brain has gone on a different tangent. Okay, so where was I? We're talking about age. Um, aha. Okay. Now, let me bring another perspective to you. Uh, a lot of people criticize our government. A lot of people, everybody criticizes the government. But I will say this. I can speak for Lagos State. I don't think any state could have done much more than Lagos State did with the resources we have. 
And uh, one thing COVID did was expose how bad the healthcare system is in Nigeria. It is bad. Um, but it is not as bad as people say. It really isn't as bad as people say. I remember when I was in Luth a few years ago, um, when I was a medical student, nobody did kidney transplant in Nigeria. Nobody did hip replacement. Nobody did um, heart surgery. None of these things were happening. But now in Nigeria, we're doing heart surgery. We're doing hip transplants. We're doing uh, shoulder transplants. We're doing complex surgery. We're doing uh, kidney transplants. We're doing a lot of things that were not done before. So it is not correct to say healthcare has been going backwards. It hasn't been going backwards. It has been improving. It definitely has been improving. Not as fast as it should. Definitely not as fast as it should. And unfortunately, most of the improvement is in the private sector. All right? Most of it is in the private sector. The government is still lagging behind. But that will come. And unfortunately, a disease like COVID is beyond the private healthcare system. The government has to be in charge of it. And that's what exposed the weakness of our healthcare system. But Lagos states, I heard a WHO person say we're number four in the world as far as uh, um, being ready for COVID. So Lagos state did well. That I must give them. Um, the rest of the country, the truth is you go to the east, you go to Delta, you go to any of these states, nobody is wearing a mask. They, if you go here with your mask, you look like you're not well. But nobody's wearing a mask. They're not getting sick. A few do get sick, but not like we had it in Lagos. That first wave, we all knew we had a crisis. We all knew we had a crisis. All the healthcare uh, places were f full. Now, so just to let you know, this third phase is uh, real. In March, Lagos State closed down all the isolation centers, closed down all the hospitals, Reddington and uh, the other, uh, Pelon closed down the ICU. Now they're all full. So do not think that this thing is uh, a, a, it's not here. It is here. Pelon is full. Redditing, they call this Armored Shield, is full. Yaba is full. So please, don't be amongst those going to fill up the place. Uh, simple thing. I keep saying this over and over again. Wear your mask. Those of us who wear glasses, the mask keeps fogging up our glasses, but it's okay. It's better to fog up your glasses than, than uh, get sick. Now, how many people here, please, I want a real answer. How many people here have had their vaccination, COVID vaccination? Very good. That is very, very good. Now, I've had mine. If I have, I've had more than, I've had three. Uh, first, I got COVID last year. I got COVID in, uh, I think, May. I was quite ill. I did not, was not admitted to the hospital, partly because I knew what to do with myself anyway, but uh, I stayed at home. Uh, my wife joined me in the COVID. She decided to get the COVID as well. Um, so that's one vaccination. Then I did the AstraZeneca times two. Now some people are saying, oh, they read in social media, COVID vaccines are dangerous. They have side effects, people die. AstraZeneca is not good. We want Pfizer, we want Moderna. The truth is, you keep waiting for those vaccines, the thing might get you before you get the vaccine. And it's just not worth it. I used to weigh 95 kilos, 1995 kilos before COVID. I went down to 78. The thing hits you hard. I mean, when it hits you, it hits you hard. It's not a small matter, it hits you hard. Now, my wife, only thing she did was, um, she wasn't even sick. You know, young people, they're always different. Uh, she, it's just one day she was cooking and none of us could eat the food. And she kept adding more salt to her own plate saying there's not no salt. That's why I said, Madam, let's go and test. She couldn't, she couldn't taste again. That was her only symptom, no taste. All right, so different people have different things, but those of us above 60, or in fact, above 55, be very careful. COVID is deadly in our age group, especially if you have hypertension if you have diabetes, if you are overweight. COVID is very, very nasty to people who are overweight. I mean, I don't mean mildly overweight, I mean big. All right, so please be very careful. Try not to get this thing. The vaccine is back in Nigeria. At least we have it in Lagos now, all right? The first set of vaccines we got were donated. 
Nigeria has bought some. They've bought the Johnson & Johnson. They've bought Moderna. No, um, America gave us uh, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. And then there's Pfizer. Now, everybody's worried about uh, freezing at minus 70 degrees or whatever that thing is. I do know Lagos State has the ability to store those things. I know Abuja has. I can't speak for the other states. I don't know. But please, once this vaccine is available, please go and get it. Please go and get it. Most of the people who are dying are dying or are, are unvaccinated people. Most of the people, all right, who are dying are unvaccinated. Now, the vaccine is not 100%. So I'm not going to tell you if you take the vaccine, you're never going to get sick. No. But what it does do, all of them, AstraZeneca, Moderna, all of them, what they do is reduce the chances of you being very ill or dying. They do do that. One or two will still die. All of us are going to die, so we can't dodge death forever. But just do your own best and try. The best thing we have now is the vaccine. Don't believe all those theories. Well, Pfizer and Co, they're here to make money. There's no doubt about it. But they also make other drugs that save lives. So they're there to make money. We are there to spend our money and uh, be saved as well. So I don't think the US and all these other governments are pushing vaccines because they want us to spend money on vaccinations. I don't think so. Vaccines save lives. Now, before anybody asks me, let me answer that question. Ivermectin. Um, everybody, everywhere I go, is ivermectin good? The bottom line is this. The medical community does not know yet. There are several big studies going on now to find out if there's a difference. But I have personally treated patients who died with ivermectin and who didn't take ivermectin. So the answer is, I do not know that it helps. Yesterday or day before yesterday, the CDC announced in the US that please don't take ivermectin, it is dangerous. But the difference is this. In the US, ivermectin is only available for uh, animals. It's not used in human beings, so the formulation is very different from ours. We use it for parasites here. Yeah. I can say this, ivermectin is not a dangerous drug in Nigeria. It isn't. If it works or not, I don't know. So I'm not going to say don't take it or take it. I do not know. We should know in a few months if it works or not. Okay. We've already uh, talked about chloroquine. I mean, they've talked about it. It was the, it was the best drug since uh, sliced bread. We now know it doesn't work. So please, be very careful of those professors of COVID on social media. There are many. There are many. In fact, I saw one this morning as I was coming here that somebody died in first cardiology of COVID yesterday, and they had had their vaccinations times two. No such thing happened. Uh, so be very careful of those uh, professors of uh, COVID on uh, the internet. And I think with that, I've said most of what I remember I want to say. And uh, I'm open for any questions. Thank you. How do we do the questions? Or there's no questions. Praise God. Please, if you have questions, just indicate by raising your hand. And um, the also, as we hold the mic, just speak to the mic microphone. Please let us give number so that if you want to ask question, uh, just raise your hand. Please, after now, if number is given, we may not. So if you are still doubting whether to ask question or not, please, I want you to conclude now before the number is given. Okay, we have brother... Uh, Benson, one. Mrs. Sole, two. Mrs. Igubomere, three. Who is there? Choir, okay. Brother Lagia, four. Uh, Princess, five. Doctor, USC, or Kapo, six. Uh, Mrs. Sosilagia, Lagia, seven. Okay, Mr. Osilagia, eight. I know he will ask questions. I know he's going to ask questions. <laughs> eight. Baba Awere, nine. Okay, number ten. Okay, Dr. Akinde, ten. Um, Daddy 
Adibayo, 11. Do we have any other person? Ah, sister, hey. <laughs> sister, who? Okay. <laughs> 12. Thank you. Please, in that order. In that order. Number one here. No, well, I'm not supposed to touch it. I'm not supposed to touch it. Uh, thank you, doctor. Sorry, I'm not asking a question. You were telling the story before the change of slide came in. And I forgot about, it. Yes. No, no, you didn't finish it. You are talking about people who, uh, who, live, who are over 85. You didn't finish it. You are saying something about people who live over 85 that are not one of them that, uh, you didn't finish it. Ah, okay, they, thank you very much. I knew I was saying something, but you know, old age. Um, <laughs> Okay, yes, people above 85 in our eyes, I think the reason why they don't get hit with COVID as bad is they have grown through all the childhood diseases. And in Nigeria, number one cause of death is childhood mortality from infections, pneumonia, diarrhea, things like that, malaria. And um, they've lived all through this and gone through this and they've survived. So to survive all this stuff and become 80-something in a third world country is not easy. So I think the immune system has, is immune to many things, including things still coming. So the, the uh, COVID came, they just knocked it off like a mosquito that I beg, go and go somewhere. So that was my theory about the elderly people. They have already got uh, a lot of immunity. And the thing I forgot, thanks for bringing me back to where I was, yes is if you are a government official or you're the one in charge of allocating resources to health care, what would you do? Um, first, number one cause of death is uh, pneumonia amongst children, infectious diseases. 350,000 Nigerians died last year from pneumonia. Children, okay? Malaria, about 180,000 in children. COVID. You say our statistics are wrong, okay, but 2,000 have died in Nigeria. Let's say our statistics are wrong and you multiply it by 10, it's still 20,000. So where would you put your resources? Would it be on COVID that's killing elderly people uh, or would you put it on the children? So you see, when we blame the government, we've got to put things in perspective. Where do they put our uh, limited resources? And I think um, expecting Nigeria to buy vaccines for 200 million people is not realistic. It really isn't. Our healthcare budget is 4 billion. Healthcare budget for the whole country is 4 billion. They calculated it at, I've forgotten how much, maybe $1 a vaccine. Anyway, it was going to come to 4 point something billion. The whole healthcare budget on only COVID. So you can see the dilemma the, the government officials are, are into. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I'd like to find out how soon after an infection can you take the vaccine? Ah, that's a very good question. It is not clear, but the recommendation is wait a minimum of six weeks. Minimum. So you have to wait at least six weeks. The longer you wait, probably the safer, because what we found is that the antibodies stay in your system for about six to eight months. Then they start to go down. So, but at six weeks, it's still high, and then you can get a reaction with too many antibodies in your system. So, I would say if it's me, I'd wait three months. All right. Good morning, church. Thanks. Uh, doctor, I'd like to ask a question relating to children. It's my understanding that we are not giving vaccines to children under 18. I don't understand the reasoning. I'd like to hear your opinion. Um, but I also got information during the week that the WHO, um, I think from Europe, this information came from Europe, had, um, I don't know that they've done some study, but had decided that they were going to allow the Moderna to be administered to children 16 to 18. I'd like to get your feedback, thank you. Okay, good. Um, yes, it is not recommended to give children vaccines yet. And it's two reasons that I'm aware of. One, they're the 
group with the lowest uh, complication rate from COVID. And the complication rate from COVID is not too different from the complication rate of the vaccine. So you'd rather not give them a problem that they were not going to have. All right, so mortality amongst the 18, 20 year olds is quite low, is quite low. The vaccine, you have to understand something about vaccination. It takes minimum of five years to thoroughly test a vaccine or any drug, minimum of five years. Now, this, these new vaccines have been tested under a year. And you can, if you notice, they've got emergency authorization. They haven't got full um, um, accreditation to be given. And that's because these things came out very quickly, but it was because it was a pandemic. People were dying. They had to do something quickly. So the science is not yet perfect. It's not yet perfect. But the younger people generally withstand it. But now, in the ICUs around the world, younger people are now getting to the ICUs. Uh, so they're studying the younger people to make sure it is safe to give them. One thing is certain. Um, AstraZeneca tended to cause more complications in the younger people during the uh, research. So AstraZeneca is not likely to be approved for younger people. But Moderna and Pfizer have been tested in younger people. The results are coming out and it's favorable. That's why they're now saying you can give 16 and above. Thank you. I hope that answered the question. Okay. Yeah, my first one is this. Uh, the pregnant women, is it uh, advisable to get them vaccinated? I'm not hearing you. Pregnant women. Pregnant Pre oh, okay. Yes. Um, it is recommended very strongly that pregnant women get vaccinated. Research has been done. It is still ongoing, but the preliminary results are that it is safe in pregnant women. And for sure, at least in Lagos here, we saw that pregnant women didn't do well when they got COVID. So two people were lost, baby and the uh, mother. So without any doubts, um, the potential side effects of COVID in pregnant women are much less than the potential complications of COVID. Good morning, church. Please, uh, I want to know if, uh, if you have enough sunlight um, from that. I, I mean, if you have enough sunlight, you still need to take vitamin D you know, sunlight from nature. So um, you still need to take and this yes. Two questions. And the other one is during the COVID last year March, Dr. Jibade uh, Dr. Jibade was talking about in the NTA was talking about uh, bread suppressing the immune system, bread particularly. So right. and and uh, from research from research we learned that immune system also low immune system contribute to having COVID faster. So I want you to talk on that. Bread and flour bread. foods. Bread, bread. Bread. Suppresses the immune system. Yes, bread, particularly. Uh, I'm not aware of that. <laughs> I just am not aware of that. Uh, the other one was going outside. The scientific answer to that is easy. Go to a lab, check your vitamin D level. If it is normal, you're fine. But most of us won't go to the lab to check our vitamin D level. So... I would say if you are out in the sun regularly, yes, you should be okay. But it should be. But I do not know if you have any reason why you don't absorb uh, the sunlight and make vitamin D. So the best way, scientific way, most of the labs in town can do vitamin D level and you can check. You can check. And oh, that is, brings me to the other theory about vitamin D. You remember in the US and in UK, black people were more affected than white people as far as uh, mortality from COVID goes. And that's also my theory. Black skin requires more sunlight to, because of the pigments to pro, uh, produce vitamin D, all right? So you need more sun. And it's, the pigment protects us from the sun over here. But when we go abroad, we have been programmed to hide from the sun. So a Nigerian going to the UK is not going to go and look for sun, all right? So, it's now totally reducing all sources of vitamin D and its D level is likely to be lower than that of the white people who go sunbathing and doing all those things. So that's another reason I think that's happened. Be the bread one, I've, I, I don't know. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, number six. Um, 
I enjoyed your lecture, especially how you took it very natural and real. And um, I think that suits a lot of people who had one or two schools of thought about this. So um, I want to ask, did you consider the aspect of fear or panic factor in the area of COVID in terms of, um, it looks like there's a relationship with, um, between people who know more having COVID or presenting with COVID and people who know less. Like you compare the socioeconomic status of the Ajegunle person and the, uh, maybe the, our church person. Did you consider that, that in terms of um, the way COVID presents or people that present in your facility, for instance? That is one. Two, is it possible that people who died may have also died of natural factor that they may have died with before COVID came? We noticed during the COVID pandemic, a lot of people died and were termed that they died of COVID. These may have also been people who could have also died of the same um, secondary factors, the comorbidities that they could have also died even before COVID came to play. So uh, I want to hear from you. Does it mean that everybody who dies, especially the high, highly placed, is usually COVID related? I know that two years ago, people also died of similar consequences before COVID came. Thank you, sir. Okay, in case I forget the first question, just remind me. Um, but the second one, yes, you could have been dying from something else and get COVID and uh, still died and you were positive for COVID, but it wasn't COVID that killed you, yes. But the truth is, those of us who took care of the critically ill COVID people, there's some features we saw we have, that we have never ever seen that could only be COVID. There's some things that kill people that we have never ever seen. Like the gentleman he talked about, um, he had kidney failure, he had liver failure. We've had that before. Um, that could be, he might have just had COVID and died from his kidney failure or renal failure. But there were some other signs. Difficult to say it in non-medical terms, but there's a pattern on the CT scan that none of us has ever seen till COVID came. None of us. And you will just be amazed, like seeing cement in the lungs. You just don't understand how it comes about. And when you see it, you look at the CT scan, you know this one can't make it. Because all the lungs have become concrete. And uh, so those kind of things, you know, is purely COVID. Now true, a lot of people were certified as having died from COVID without anybody checking anything because when you come in sick at that time, all the hospitals were afraid. They just keep you in one corner. When you die, they just write uh, COVID. Um, and autopsies were not being done because the um, pathologists didn't want to get COVID either. Uh, so yes, some people would have been labeled as having died from COVID that did not die. But there are some signs uh, that you only see in COVID. So that's my answer on that. Now the fear factor. Not sure I thoroughly understood the question, but I know amongst the educated, there is a healthy respect for COVID. People are aware of it and are scared. So the response is two ways. Some is denial. They will tell you, oh, doctor, I had malaria. Uh, it always starts with malaria. So once somebody calls me, that, yeah, me I had malaria, and then it hasn't gone. I took the medicine, then they told me it's typhoid. I took nine times out of 10 is COVID, all right? But the person doesn't want to hear COVID. So when you mention COVID, uh, if I can bust out, uh, I reject that in Jesus' name, all that. Uh, and like I would tell them, it's okay to reject, but just verify in case uh, the prayer didn't get through. Um, but yes, the uneducated are not afraid of COVID. They don't believe it exists, they don't. We are a bit more concerned, but some people will say, maybe I have COVID, let me go and test. Some will say it cannot be COVID, they start taking anti-malaria tablets. But that's my understanding of it. Thank you. Number seven. Good morning, sir. My name is Bukia Shibaja. Um, you said um, you're not sure of um, ivermectin, but I know that these days um, the, uh, the best treatment that we use for COVID now is ivermectin. Um, 
even when my sister had it in, in, in the US, I suddenly became a doctor and sent ivermectin to her. Our friend that didn't use it died, but she survived it. And when I go into a crowded area, like I go to a party, um, the first thing I do when I get up is inhale. And then maybe the se second day I take two tablets of ivermectin, just to be sure of myself. I want to know whether I'm doing the right thing. Because you said, you said you are not sure of what I am, um, you are not sure of ivermectin. The documentary I saw sometime last year said, if you take one tablet of ivermectin, it is enough to kill the virus. It was a documentary from America. It says, if you take one tablet, it was enough to kill the virus. That's why when I go to a crowded place, the second day I take like two tablets and I'm okay. And then somebody says that for prophylaxis, you should take four tablets every month. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know why you're asking me. I said I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the truth is this. Mm, ivermectin does kill the virus. No doubt about it. They've done it in the lab to test. But the doses required to kill the virus is lethal in human beings. So you see, that's why the doses we can achieve with the tablets are not up to 1% of the dose that's required to kill it in the lab. That's why some people are skeptic that does it work or it doesn't work. Now, the group you are talking about, they even went to Congress to testify about ivermectin and co. But the truth is, there's a method that is used in science to evaluate these things, all right? There's a method that's used in science, and so far, um, no evidence has come out supporting or not supporting ivermectin. We should know in a month or two. We should really know. So, but I'll tell you this, it is a safe drug. So you're not causing any harm by taking it. So um, until we know for sure, like I tell you this, steroids, when COVID started, everybody said steroids would make it worse. So we were not, the whole medical community said, do not give steroids. Only for us to find out later that steroids are the number one thing you can give. The main reason for mortality coming down is steroids. So till today, I still feel guilty not giving the first few people steroids because we were told not to give. But now we know, give steroids. So you see, science is not fast. We have to take our time and study it. Now, the same thing you're saying about ivermectin. Uh, I think Onyo Vife said they gave, is it Tamalani I can't remember what it gave some people to take. One, a traditional ruler said they gave Amalani Wedu for the COVID and they got better. I don't know. The truth is this. If a hundred people get COVID in this room here, God forbid, but if a hundred people get COVID here, 98 of us will come out without being very sick. Only 2% will get very ill and possibly die. So you see that of those 98, some will say they took uh, dodo and they got better. Some will say they took ivermectin. So it's difficult to say. That's why you have to study it and find out. But I will say this, I have no objection to anybody taking ivermectin, none at all. There's no science to say it is harmful. That's different from chloroquine where there was science to say it is harmful. But ivermectin, no, nothing has come to say it is bad or good. So that's my answer. So I would not criticize anybody for taking ivermectin. I know some medical doctors who are taking ivermectin regularly. In fact, one or two might be here, but I won't mention their names. Mm -hmm. Number eight, please. Um, good, good morning, doctor. Good morning, church. Um, morning. According to you, your third vaccine was the COVID infection itself. First. First. Yes. Okay. So are you saying that having had COVID, then it is very likely that one will not fall to COVID in the nearest future? And if this is so, for how long can one hold down without even taking the vaccine? Second question. A friend of mine has refused to take the vaccine. According to him, I don't know what his source is. He says he believes that the vaccine will have effect on its male potency. Whether this is true or not, I don't know. And he has also gone 
as far as saying it will even affect reproduction in the male and in the female. I have gone past that age, so I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> but, but is this so, so that I can go back and educate him? Thank you. Okay. Um, These questions you asked, uh, they are very pertinent because uh, even amongst doctors, there's argument about who should take the vaccine and who should not, especially amongst those who have had COVID already. With most infectious diseases, viral diseases before COVID, once you got the infection, you were generally immune. And uh, when COVID started, I remember when we were in the ICU, about four or five of us, uh, older doctors looking after the patients, our prayer was let's just get COVID a little bit and become immune. All right, so let's not get COVID to get sick. And then, but all of us there, we all got COVID and we all got sick. Uh, but we were happy when we survived and uh, felt we were now immune. Only to find out that you can get COVID a second time. All right. Usually the second time is not as bad, but in some people it was worse. So that put us in a dilemma. But now the recommendation is if you've had COVID, fine. The vaccine is safe. You're better off giving yourself extra protection. In the UK, US, you can't, as a medical staff, medical professional, work in hospital without taking a vaccine. You can't, uh, because it's two things. One, apart from protecting yourself, you still have the ability to give it to other vulnerable people. So they don't want you to come to work. There's a friend of mine who is on a doctor panel at Amon, who is a strong anti-vaxxer. He's had COVID twice. He doesn't believe there's any vaccination that can be better than getting COVID twice. But because he was at risk of losing his job, he had to go and take the vaccine. So um, that is the story on that one. The other question was uh, fertility and all that. Um, the studies have shown that at least for the next year and a half, for the, uh, as long as the vaccines have been around. Okay. For the next year and a half, as long as the vaccines have been around, it does not affect fertility or sexual uh, uh, competence or, I mean, you know, it, it, it doesn't affect that as far as we know. Now, 10 years down the line, I don't know. But for now, no. Yes. director of UCH got infected and after a while he got killed and he listed out those medicines he used and then added please I went home and he listed all those native herbs that he used before he got killed now what is there a collaboration between uh, medical practice and herbal practice because I fear for the less privileged, the Ajegules, the Jaramans. I will tell you, uh, let me give you myself as an example. Two weeks ago I had malaria and my doctor was screaming mad. I went to the hospital, he gave me Every test I should do, I did. I wasn't still feeling fine. Then I told him, please, I want to go for COVID test. He said, no, until I do another test. That test cost me 93,000 naira. They didn't get any COVID. But I still insisted I wanted to do COVID test. So I went to Afri, Afri something in Nigeria. Africa global. Those things don't come cheap. I paid 52,000 for that test. Not until I got a negative result was I content in my mind that I don't have COVID. But how many poor people could go through that? That is the reason why I'm asking that other native side of 
the purity for the less privileged. Thank you, sir. Um, well, that's a difficult question for me to answer. Um, as you know, uh, native medicine as its practice is different from uh, modern medicine, if, uh, if that's the correct terminology. So we are not privy to what they know. Now, I do know this. There is a lot of native medicine that works. There is. There's no doubt about it for different diseases. There is a lot, especially malaria that is endemic here. Now, as far as COVID goes, I don't know because to prove to us in the Western the way of uh, doing medicine, we need to see data that shows that this thing works. So I don't know that it works or it doesn't work. Now, the CMD of UCH said it took this and this. Me too, I can come out and say, I had COVID, I was drinking beer every night, and I got better. It doesn't mean the beer helped. It just doesn't. Until you study a lot of people, half with the uh, intervention and half without the intervention, and then see the numbers before you can say scientifically that it works. So I can't say uh, herbs work or they don't. I just don't know. Don't have these. And as far as the testing goes, yes, it's 50 something K. It's expensive. Most people don't earn that. And, um, but the good news about that is in Lagos State, if you have symptoms, the test is free. But you have to go to one of the centers, one of the government run centers. The test is free. If you just want to find out, for finding out sake, you have to pay 50 something K. But if you are sick, the test is free. At least that's official. Uh, what happens in, in real life, I don't know. But that's, you know, what I have to say on that. Thank you very much, Dr. Abiyemi. Dr. Abiyemi, thank you very much. I can't see you. OK. Uh, oh, Dr. Right. Johnson. All right. Now, you said we uh, should discountenance most of the news in the uh, social media. But I want you to react specifically to one. There's one from a professor of virology that says people who are vaccinated are going to die in the next two to three years. That everybody vaccinated will die in the next two to three years. And the reason is that we said by then there's going to be an excess of antibodies. And this excess of antibodies in the system we um, lead to all sorts of diseases and a maximum Anybody has received any of the vaccines of, uh, uh, against COVID will definitely succumb to any of these series of multiple diseases that will attack the different body system. What is the reaction to that, sir? It's from a professor of virology in the US. I don't like condemning what people say, but that's total BS. Um, he has no, no data whatsoever to prove what he's saying. The vaccine hasn't been around for two, three years. So how does he know what's going to happen? Is it based on some mad theory he has in his head? No. Uh, vaccines have been around for a long, long time. And uh, vaccines don't kill. COVID vaccine is not the first vaccine. The technology is not new. The mRNA that people worry about is going to change your DNA and all that has been in existence for a long time. But this is the first time they have needed to ramp up quickly and produce a vaccine. So no, I can guarantee him that most of us who took that vaccine will be here in two, three years' time. Most of us, maybe not all, though. we all have our own issues. But uh, I can tell the man to his face, he is an incredible falsehood he's spreading around. And I'm not sure he's even a professor of virology, but being a professor of virology doesn't mean you're not, you're always not, I mean, you're not crazy. Good morning, sir, and good morning, church. My own is more of a request than a question. And the request is this. I will listen to you. I listen to various comments and questions and answers. And I know that most sermons and things like this in this chapel are not already recorded. I want to request that copies be made available for this, for us to buy. Because you can imagine, it's after your lecture that a lot of the youth just come in. And when I'm saying youth, this 
guys are more than 25 years and above. Two, most of us who are here, we also like to disseminate the professionalism that you have elucidated. And the only means is to have the tape to play. So I want to require that copies be made available for us to buy. God bless. Well, that's not my question. Uh, the people recording can answer that. But if there's a profit, uh, let me know. Wait, sorry, I didn't hear the first question from the beginning. You said something about Italy. <laughs> Italian mobility percent. I, I'm not getting was that. Was the root of COVID-19 and spread more during burial of the victims. Why didn't the advanced nations prevent this? Because prevention is better than cure. Next, it's not only in the East. I'm regular in hospital, especially last week, the Kajan. Last Friday I was there, the whole resident doctors were on strike. It's only consultants that attend to patients. We, I, I can't understand this country. If patients can get treated, if you get there, most of the clinics are deserted. And we are talking of COVID-19 and respray. Most of the conveniences, you enter it, you will run away. It's not taken good care of and we are talking of control. If you are coming out from hospital with your nose mask, you look like a sacred cow before other people. Even when you want to board a bus, people will be scared. Here at Ikeja, I was there last Friday. Please, what are we doing in practice to stop the spread you are telling us about? Thank you. Okay, um, I still didn't get the first question. The, I, didn't, I didn't understand it, but the second one, I think I understand it a little bit. Uh, doctors are on strike. The toilets are in bad shape. People are not wearing their mask. Yes, I agree. I've always been one of those who has been advocating against doctors going on strike. Um, but it is a two-way street. The government and the government is generally not been uh, doing what they should do. You can't have people working for you for six months and not pay them. It's not right. And then uh, you see all these lavish things they do with the money. So I agree with that. It's not right. But it's difficult for me to support a doctor's strike. It's just difficult. It's against them. Um, but maybe that's because I'm in private practice. It's easy for me to condemn them. But um, we went on strike when we were in medical school. Uh, no, when we, were in, uh, when we were doctors. But ours was Ali must go, and we were fighting the military that time. So it was a different thing. Uh, not money, because then we were being paid regularly. Now, I st at that first question, I, 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 I didn't get it. OK. Doctor, how long does immunity last after the vaccination? That's my first question. And the second one, please address this issue of DNA being altered by the vaccine, because even doctors are propagating that idea. Thank you. Okay, how long does immunity last? Um, we don't know, but we know this. Since vaccines have started, immunity, they've been measuring the immunities and for now, up to now it's eight months. And we know Im the immunity lasts at least eight months. It starts to go down around seven months. The antibody level starts to go down around seven months. That's why they're considering suggesting a third vaccine as a booster dose. But we know for sure at least it lasts um, eight months. That is from the vaccine. But that's antibodies that we can measure. There's another component to the uh, immunity to, to uh, COVID, which is um, called T-cell immunity, which is difficult to measure. And it's only done in research labs. So we don't know how much of a role that plays as well. 
So for now, we know it lasts eight months. Then the other question, you see if you ask me two, three questions, my brain can't, my hard drive is full. Uh, what was the other question? DNA, yes, thank you. Okay, now there's only one DNA vaccine in the world. That was just approved by India, I think last week. The rest are mRNA, which is what worries people. Now, it does not affect your DNA. What mRNA does, in simple terms, is it helps the, the spike uh, virus that it puts into the vaccine to go into the cell. So it helps it go into the cell and teaches the cell how to form antibodies. It doesn't go anywhere near the nucleus of the cell, which is where DNA is found. So theoretically and practically, it does not affect DNA. Now, the new DNA vaccines, I don't know. I haven't seen enough information to be able to give information on, on that. But the mRNA definitely does not affect your DNA. Does not. Praise the Lord. Um, I have two questions. The first one is, when the AstraZeneca um, vaccine came to Nigeria, some of us took, took like, the two doses. And now we hear that they've given um, some doses of Johnson & Johnson. So I just want to ask that if, if we can combine like two different vaccines, especially with the Delta um, variant. So if more vaccines are created for like the different, like the new variants of this um, COVID-19 virus, can we combine them? That's my first question. Then my second question is, how, does the, um, how protective is the vaccine? Because a friend of mine, she was fully vaccinated and she contracted the virus and she had like crazy symptoms. She still has like a persistent, persistent headache till date, even after testing negative and after, after being treated. So like after we take the vaccine, what do we have to do? To, do can we go out without our mask knowing that we won't get, we will be protected or how protected are we going to be? Uh, those are my two questions. Okay, first one was uh, mixing vaccines. Yes, um, there's research going on now on mixing vaccines. Uh, and the scientific community that deals with vaccines believes that there will be an advantage to mixing. But the research is still going on. But when you're going to mix, it is thought that it is best to mix a virus vector with the mRNA. Virus vector is the Johnson & Johnson and the AstraZeneca. Those are the traditional vaccines. mRNA is the new one. So they feel mixing one with the other will give you a better boost to your immunity. It is felt. It is not yet proven. But um, the other problem with mixing, it's more of um, paperwork. If you get Pfizer in America, one dose. You get AstraZeneca in Nigeria, one dose. The paperwork won't match. So you travel to another country, they will say, where's your passport? So that's the other thing. But this thing is, is still evolving. So I don't think there's going to be any problem mixing. The question is going to be, how soon after should you take the other vaccine? That's what we're all trying to find out. Then the other question was um, vaccine and protection. The vaccine protects, all right? But all vaccines protect quite well. But they don't stop you from getting the infection. What they do is stop you from getting the severe infection. So you can get the vaccine and still come down with COVID. But most of the time, you will not need to be admitted to hospital for the COVID, most of the time. Nothing is 100% in this our business, nothing. Um, so yes, you can get what we call breakthrough infections. You see, the thing is clogging up my, let me just take off. The mask is a nuisance, there's no doubt. Um, so you can, um, get a vaccine, come down with COVID, but usually you will not get admitted to hospital. You'll not be that sick. Now your friend, difficult to say, because um, there's something called long COVID that you get and the symptoms last for a long time. Um, it might be the case, it might not be the case. It might be something else, but I can't speak to that person because I haven't seen them. But yes, and yes, you still need to wear your masks. Now, case in point, Israel. Israel probably has the most vaccinated population. And the government said, go back to normal life and all that. There's a surge in COVID again. So they're giving people third vaccines and they're now vaccinating younger people. Um, and that's because of this thing we call herd immunity. Herd immunity is if 90 or so percent of us here are, are immune to COVID. 
the chances are that those who are not immune will not get it because there's nobody going to transmit it to them. So that's herd immunity. Over there, they thought they had herd immunity, but then they found out that they did not vaccinate children and other people. So those ones were now spreading it to the more vulnerable population. So as of now, yes, still wear your mask. But if you go to a place where everybody has been vaccinated and you know, it's probably safe not to wear your mask. But how are you going to know? Like now, they're going to football matches in the UK. Uh, they're showing that they have the vaccination before they let them in. We shall find out in a month or two if it is working or it's not. 